tippy 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 to the top well, I've never been arrested but I've had a couple close calls This is, this will be good. Thank y'all for being here. This is great. This is awesome. Let's get honest real quick. I need this to go well. <laughs> I, this has got to go really good. <laughs> I'll put a lot of eggs in this stand-up basket. So <laughs> I cashed in every favor I've ever had. So I got to gotta make it now. Got to do it now. I haven't been good at any day jobs I've ever tried. So... <laughs> I got fired from an indoor playground. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I don't know if that happened to anybody in here. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has been fired in your socks. <laughs> it's a humbling day. <laughs> it's, it's pretty when your 19-year-old manager tells you to turn in your whistle. That's quite the... <laughs> She's like, I don't think you're hippo hot material. I was like, huh? <laughs> You didn't have to say it like that, Kelsey. That was really, really mean. Like, covered for your orthodontist appointment. Does that mean nothing to you? Good grief. It's not good. It's not good. I nannied for a while. That was one of my fun jobs. Nanny, male nanny. Interesting job. I loved it. It was, nannying was great. It's awesome. If you've never done it, very easy job. You just keep a kid alive for eight hours at a time. It's pretty great. That's it. Just show back up with the kid you started with. That's about it. No complaints. They bring you back the next day. It's a good, it's a good system. It was weird walking around with this kid because he definitely didn't look like my child. That was one thing. It was very weird. It was very bizarre. And uh, people talked about him, though, like he was my kid. And that was always weird. We're, like, running some errands or at the grocery store, and the cashier's checking us out. And she's asking me a bunch of questions about him. And then she, like, complimented. She's like, oh, he looks just like you. I'm like, look again. (laughs) 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 No. (laughs) And she got to one point, she goes, "Uh, well, how many kids do you have? And I was like, ugh, this one's not even mine. So (laughs) none, actually. (laughs) Zero. And she got mad. She was so mad. She's like, why didn't you stop me? Like, I've been talking for a while. (laughs) Like, why didn't you tell me he's not your kid? And I was like, I don't know. I'm with him all day. That's a red flag. I can't, <laughs> can't be at a park holding a kid's hand like it's not my kid, guys. Don't ask me about him. Don't ask him about me. Come here, buddy. Hold my hand. Oh, he couldn't say my name for like two years, and I was like, I'm arrested if anybody really looks into this. Be like, who's this guy? And he's just silent. I'm like, yeah, take me to jail. I get it. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh. His mom signed us up for a bunch of mommy and me classes. Which I guess when I took him, I was like, this dude and me classes? I don't know. I don't know. We had gymnastics every Monday, and uh, that was terrifying for me. That was scary, because uh, I didn't want to double bounce somebody during trampoline time. That was real careful stepping. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if y'all have started your week by sending somebody else's toddler flying through the air with the Moana soundtrack in the background. It's a, it's a weird day. Oh, one of his classmates ran up to me one day, and uh, she was like, um, why are you here? I was like trying to be fun. I was like, gymnastics. And she gets real loud. She goes, um, daddies are supposed to work. I was like, well, I'm nobody's father, little girl, so riddle me this. Uh, Yeah, I'm a strange adult man in your gymnastics class. (laughs) Why are you talking to me? Like, who's your mom? She's bad at this. Like, what are we doing? I called Stranger Danger on myself. That was a weird, it's a weird day. Oh. We took an art class. That was one of the things we did, took an art class. And uh, the teacher was very positive. She, like, sat us down. She's like, I want you guys to learn with your toddler. And I was like, cool. And uh, after a few weeks, I learned this toddler sucks at art. <laughs> and uh, the teacher never told him. So, like, that fell on my shoulders. That was an awkward. 
There's one class where we're sitting in the U, we're sitting in this U shape, and it's just me and a bunch of moms. It's me and like 17 moms. I'm on one end of the U, mom's on the other end of the U, and she starts telling the story of giving birth. I was like, all right, it was a pretty big day. That's a good, that's a good story, you know, like, all right. And then the mom to her right tells her story of giving birth. I was like, all right, it's, you know, this makes sense. Like, yeah, I don't know. And then three other moms told their stories of giving birth. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> it's coming around to me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I had to headline that show. That was... <laughs> Done a lot of comedy. Done a lot of comedy. Never had to follow 16 birth stories in a row. <laughs> so many. I heard words that I was, I was like, I got to look that one up. I don't know if that's... I don't know. I didn't know what to do. I was like, I got a tooth pulled once. Does that help? Like... <laughs> I don't know. It's not a great story. I took drugs. I didn't try to be a hero like Denise, you know? Like, <laughs> like give me what you got. <laughs> I didn't take it home with me, so I don't, it wasn't 100% accurate, but, you know. Figure it out. Figure it out. Oh, we had a pool day every month in the neighborhood, and that was my favorite day of the month. It was, it was great. It was me and the eight neighborhood moms around me, and uh, we would just sashay our way down to the neighborhood pool, and... Uh, we just soaked our feet and gossiped about whichever mom didn't show up. It was, it was great. I loved it. It was all just me and seven very tasteful tankinis living our best life. It was wonderful. It was great. There was one time this one of them pulled a bottle of rosé out of her purse. I was like, this is the American dream. What are we, what are we doing? We put floaties on the kids and then we drank. We're professionals. But... I don't know. It was great. They poured me one, and I was like, this is what I want to be when I grow up. This is, I want this life, you know? Like, I want to live that life. I want to sip rosé out of a stainless steel Yeti tumbler at Tuesday. <laughs> like, you're a white wine with one ice cube? Sign me up. Like, that's phenomenal. Oh, man. I graduated from Nanny, and I'm a personal assistant now, so I just, adults now, that's what it is. <laughs> like, I don't know. My boss is a big runner, and one of my chores is to go grab race bibs, and that's my favorite thing to do. I love that job <laughs> so much, because I get to go and show up to these race places, and I just stand in line with a bunch of runners. <laughs> <laughs> just don't say a thing. I don't say a word the whole, whole time. I know they all talk about me when they get back in the car. I know that. <laughs> just pile back. You saw them too, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I looked in his eyes. They weren't all there. Should we go back? Should we help him? Should we? Oh, the tent was next to a Chick-fil-A. Did he get in the wrong line? Should we? I don't know. I don't know. One of my favorite things to do is I get to the front of the line, and I get the number and everything, and I like to ask the people when the race is and then be shocked when they say the next day. That's always kind of fun. <laughs> Here it is. Here's your... When's this race? Tomorrow? Oh, no. Ah. Uh. Uh. That was a goal. Uh. It really snuck up on me, man. 13.1 13, 13 miles. All, all right, let's... I'll stretch. Let's see. I'll be there. Look for me. Look for me. Oh... I don't know. I don't know. Trying to get healthier and trying to do that. Think about cutting some things out of my diet. Thought that might help. Tried to do a dry January, but uh, January is a long month. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I wanted to do a dry January. Then I looked at a calendar of January, and I was like, no. that's There's like five Wednesdays. I didn't know there was that many Wednesdays. I didn't know it could work like that. <laughs> I didn't, that dry January lasted until 1 p.m. on January. That was it. <laughs> Try again in February. I don't know. It's a shorter month. We'll see what happens. I don't, I don't know. I had one of my friends that was super pumped. I was trying to get healthy. He was trying to help me out. He's like, you should cut out dairy. You should get dairy out of your diet. Dairy super unhealthy. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, we're the only mammals that drink other mammals' milk. 
I was like, well, that's probably because they don't know about it, you know? Like, <laughs> You think they're choosing to not drink other mammals' milk? I, I don't know. I live with two mammals. I live with a wife mammal and a dog mammal. And according to this guy, if I put 2% milk in my dog's bowl, she should be like, actually, no thank you. Uh, <laughs> do you know how unhealthy that stuff is? Like, I don't really want to get bloaty tonight, you know? Just, I think I got vaccinated too early. I don't know if anybody else had that. I got it quick, real quick, real <laughs> Real quick, I, for, before any of my friends, that was my first sign that it wasn't good. And uh, then I got questions that I wasn't ready for. That was the other reason. I was like, I probably shouldn't be here. And uh, I'm sitting in the little room, and the lady's like, all right, first question. Are you 65 or older? I was like, uh, oh, <laughs> I'm an old soul. Does that count? <laughs> like, does, that, does that help? She's like, no, that's okay. Um, are you a caretaker? And I was like, I care so much <laughs> and take that care right to people so let's, let's do it I don't know I post online about getting vaccinated post online to get some likes you know <laughs> let people know how brave I am so brave for listening to every doctor on earth that was <laughs> super brave for that <laughs> like yeah I was like I could have done my own research with my one semester of community college but <laughs> Thought, let's leave this one up to actual doctors. <laughs> let's, let's do that. Surprisingly, they didn't cover vaccines in Math 99 at Gainesville State. <laughs> like, I should probably trust people on this one. I don't... <laughs> Throw it online. Not everybody that I know liked it. Not everybody was a fan. Uh, my cousin gave me a call the next day. Cousin calls me up. He's like, hey, man. So I got that vaccine. Aren't you a little worried the government's tracking you through that thing? Like, did you just call me on a cell phone to tell me you're worried about the ghost? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I got news for you, bud. <laughs> yeah, they're aware of you. I don't know. Let <laughs> me think you're off the grid. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I was like, you own a lot of guns, and you just said government very aggressively into a cell phone. Like, <laughs> they're tuned in right now. Tell them, hey. <laughs> He had more concerns. He had more concerns. He's like, all right, man, I'm sending you this article. It says it changes your DNA. I was like, oh, good. That <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> I was like, have you met every one of our family members? I have. You <laughs> can use a mix up. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. What'd you get? I got a slow metabolism and psoriasis, you know? Like, <laughs> Gladly trade in these cards. Try again. You know? Let's go. Redeal, Moderna. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Give me the other two shots. Let's see what happens. Let's, like, are you going to get a booster every year? Yeah, I'm rolling dice every year. Every year. Till I get superpowers, let's go. <laughs> Keep going. It's good, though. I had an okay pandemic. I got married in 2020. That was a good time. Yeah. Thank you. I deserve that. I, did. I don't know. I don't know if anybody here is like engaged, getting ready to get married, any of that kind of stuff. It's not a hot take to be like weddings are super expensive. They're very stressful. I have a few like just cost cutting wedding tips. And uh, the one that we found most effective was uh, get married in April of 2020. <laughs> we got to uninvite everyone. Every... <laughs> It was great. It was, it was so cheap. It was such a cheap wedding. I don't know. It was awesome. There was four people at my wedding. Like, it, I slept in that day. It was a pretty good time. <laughs> my roommates were like, shouldn't you get on the road and get married? And I was like, I don't know. They're going to start without me. Like, what do we... <laughs> 25% of everything. Like, let's... <laughs> I don't know. 2020 was a great first year to be a husband. That was a good time. I, I was graded on a curve. That was awesome. <laughs> It was great. We had fights. We had fights. Every fight just ended with me being like, I don't know, babe, you checked the news today? Yeah, yeah, people are dying. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe loading the dishwasher a certain way isn't that big of a deal right now. Did you call your mom today? Family is all we have. Let's <laughs> on to that. Oh, man, I do have in-laws now, in-laws, and they're great. They're wonderful people. They call all the time. They call 
So they're just old. They're old people that call a lot. It's a weird thing to complain about. It really is. I don't. It's weird. Like the phone rings, and you're just like, oh, who was that? Your mom who loves us? Like, what do we? <laughs> oh. How dare she try to stay connected with people she loves in the midst of a pandemic? Like, <laughs> decline. <laughs> you know? uh, I'm just not used to it. My parents are like new old age. They're in their early 60s, so they're like trying out old age, and uh, they're going to be great at it. I can already tell. <laughs> We're warming my dad up to calls. He's bad at texting. That's so, I'm just like, let's figure this out, and then we'll talk in person. All of his texts are emergency texts. That's terrifying. We had to talk him off that ledge. That was... <laughs> Just two in the afternoon, I get a text that says, hey, call me now. <laughs> you call him up, and he just saw one of my teachers at Kroger. Like, that was it. <laughs> mm -mm. Like, you got to get somebody to proofread these. We got to, <laughs> can't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't know. My mother-in-law has hurt my feelings with phone calls before. Uh, not actual calls, just when she called. Uh, my mother-in-law called at 9 p.m. on Valentine's Day. Very confident ring. That was the most confident. The phone rung like, I know who she married. Like, that's what it felt like. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Like, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that you see and you're like, oh, that guy, uh, sex. You know, like, I'm not, <laughs> not that. <laughs> I just need you to respect me enough <laughs> to think that I can close the deal <laughs> with my wife. <laughs> On Valentine's Day. That's it. <laughs> Just that much respect. <laughs> I'll be honest, it was a good night too. I was killing it. I was having a good, like, it was great. We got a box of wine. We're box wine people. I don't know if anybody else is a box wine person. Yeah. I do Boda Box. I'm a Boda Box boy. Yeah. They love the Boda Box. It's great. It's awesome. I'm a big fan. Because, like, I was raised on bag cereal, so... The move to box wine, very natural, very, really took to that one. <laughs> that was great. It was fun. You got to protect the house now. That's my job as a husband, protect that house, and uh, hope nobody tests me on it ever. <laughs> I'm not going to be good at it. I'm not. It's not... I don't have like a cool weapon to keep us safe or anything. Uh, I have a baseball bat next to the bed, so I can keep us safe if we are robbed by a pitching machine. That's what I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for that guy. <laughs> it's brand new, it's a brand new responsibility. I don't know, last place I lived, the guy close to the door had a gun and a dog. So if bad guys got to me, I was gonna help them. That was my, <laughs> It's my strategy. I'll be like, oh, you got past Dan and his dog? Look at all your stuff. We did it, guys. <laughs> we parked out front, out back. Let's do this. Wow. Didn't know you had a man on the inside, did you? No. <laughs> the long con. <laughs> oh. I don't have a gun. I don't, I don't have a gun, and... That's just because I know I wouldn't be a responsible gun owner. Um, because I think guns are really cool. So <laughs> I'm never going to buy one. I'm never going to. I think they're so cool. Guns are awesome. They are really cool. Like, there should be less of them. They should be very difficult to get. But you're fooling yourself if you don't think they're cool. Like, like a gun range is just a gun and paper. And it's a good time. Like... Anything else you had paper, it's a good time? Guns and crayons. That's it. That's that. That's the Venn diagram. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to buy one. If I bought one, I'll just walk around my house all day, like, twirling it, like an old time you share. <laughs> like, pointing at my neighbors walking past my house. <laughs> Could have got him, you know? <laughs> I don't know. 
I threaten my dog every time she barked. That's what I do. <laughs> You're like, what are you trying to say to me? <laughs> Wouldn't be good. If I bought a gun at like 9 a.m., by 2 p.m., I'm trying to shoot butterflies in my backyard. Like, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. I'd be on the neighbor's app so quickly. So, <laughs> so quickly. Anybody else watch the Harry Potter reunion? Yeah. Yeah, all right. A few people denying our age. We're old. <laughs> everybody that did Harry Potter's old, everybody watched Harry Potter's old. That's just how it is. Now, I, I hadn't seen the movie since theater, so my wife and I, we went back and watched a few, and uh, I found it uh, pretty relatable as somebody who grew up in the South. And uh, I don't know if y'all have noticed, Harry Potter, super pro-gun. I don't know of any... Watch it with fresh eyes. It's insane. <laughs> Because wands are guns. That's all they are. Like, they're things you hold in your hand that fire things that kill people. Gun. That is. And in the Harry Potter universe, they sit a bunch of middle schoolers down. And they're like, hey, I want to let y'all know, there's a lot of bad people out there. And all those bad people have wands. And the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a wand... <laughs> good guy with a wand... <laughs> Look under your chair. <laughs> they just teach middle schoolers combat. That's all they do. They kill people by, like, the second movie. The second movie, they're using those wands to kill people. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, I have an uncle who was like, I'll never watch Harry Potter. I'm like, dude, you would love it. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Students are armed. <laughs> Teachers are armed. That's what you want. Like... Everyone's white. It's his dream. Like, I don't know what. <laughs> getting married was good. Getting out of the dating pool was the best part of getting married. That was, that was great. I was very bad at dating. I wasn't good at it. I was worse at asking women out. That was the worst part of me. And uh, I think my friends picked up on that because they all started setting me up on blind dates. <laughs> and uh, a blind date is just a really exciting way to find out how attractive your friends think you are. A lot of my friends think I have a great personality. Found, <laughs> found that out. I don't know. Blind dates are weird because you just know nothing about the person. So you just got to start knocking out stuff quick. And I was like, let's get rid of age. So I would just ask leading questions. We'd be at the table. I'd be like, hey, do you remember 9-11 or did you learn about it? <laughs> it's like a teacher tell you and you're like, what? When? Like... I'm going to slide a piece of paper across the table, write down your AOL screen name. Let's figure this out. <laughs> it was good. I had some friends set me up, and I knew it wasn't going to go well because uh, they're just out of touch with everything, and they have too much money, and I figured out they have too much money because uh, their dog passed away, and they had him cremated. And uh, that's too much money. That's too much. I didn't know it was an option. I had no idea until, like, this dog passed away. Very sad. Love this dog. Hang out with these people two weeks later. Just a fresh urn on the coffee table full of dog bits. Like, and they never talked about it. Like, they never, they never brought up once that they have, like, pieces of four or five people's dogs in their car. It's not just your dog, guys. Like, I think you're lucky if you get back a dog. I think that... I think the guy that aced vet school ended up in the crematorium. I don't know. No. You don't know how to check, right? So, I don't know. You don't know. It could be anything in there. I think it's just some fish and weights and kitty litter. I think that's all they got back. I don't know. I just didn't grow up with that kind of money. We didn't have dog cremation money. We didn't grow up poor, but, like, it wasn't that. <laughs> I don't know, we had a dog pass away. If I had asked my dad, can we cremate the family dog? He'd have been like, I don't know. How long do you think it'll take? Like, <laughs> I mean, like, don't do it close to the house, but... <laughs> Call the county, see if it's a burn day. I don't know. <laughs> You're 12, time to start figuring stuff out, you know? <laughs> Did. I moved out of my parents' house. I moved to Atlanta about six years ago. That was a good time. Yeah, it was fun. It was good. It was good to get out of my family's house. 
That was great. I, it, was, it was weird, though, moving out. I, I didn't really know where I was going to go in, and one of my best friends, uh, he was like, come live with me. Come live with me. I'm family. And it was great. So I moved in with him and his black family and uh, <laughs> learned things immediately. I learned things so quickly. I started telling this joke one time, and there's a guy in the front row, and he raised his hand. I didn't really know what to do with that. I called on him. And <laughs> He was like, what exactly did you learn? <laughs> I was like, oh, it was just, you know, not an environment I grew up in. And uh, he was like, oh, really, what environment did you grow up in? I was like, oh, super white. <laughs> I don't know if you paid attention to anything coming out of my white face. Like, <laughs> He followed up. He goes, how white is your family? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, man, my aunt plays the spoons. Does that help? <laughs> All the very, like, (laughs) what are you grading us on, man? Like, my mom has an aggressive opinion on mayonnaise brands. Like, (laughs) for those wondering, we're Duke's family. (laughs) There we go. There we go. No, this is a family of five, and they were so sweet to take me in. Uh, the, I started learning stuff first day I was there. First day I was there, they go and get groceries, and I'm like, let me be a good roommate, and I'm going to help them unload groceries. And uh, my first lesson was uh, I get the coconut oil out of the grocery bag, and I put it in the pantry. <laughs> and then I got made fun of. <laughs> by a family of five, like, all of them, all, like a three-year-old handed me a copy of White Fertility, that's what, it's crazy, she's like, go sit in the corner, I had no idea, I had no, it just wasn't in my life, I grabbed it, I was like, oh, this will be fun to cook with, and uh, they were like, it's so much more than that, like, it was, like, that goes in the toolbox, like, that goes, in the bathroom, that is for skin, that is for hair, that is in case God sends the 10th plague again, put it above your door, like it's that, it's a miracle, and I don't know, I don't know if it worked or not, all I'm saying is that I moved into that house very lonely and very single, I moved out of that house engaged, so, I don't know, you just can't not look into every possibility, you know, like, There were three kids. The kids were great. They were awesome. They're so funny. It's so fun. I came over work one day. Their four-year-old ran up to me. She gave me a big hug. She looks up and she goes, Mr. Nate, you're white. (laughs) And then she left the room. Like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to be like, what? You guessed it. Oh, it was weird. (laughs) The kids called me Mr. Nate, which was fun. It made me feel like I owned a bakery on Sesame Street. Like that one. (laughs) It was a good time. They're just like, Mr. Nate's here. I'm like, can you count to 10? Like, it was, <laughs> it was fun. It's a good time. I don't know what those kids thought of me. I'm not sure. Uh, they didn't respect me much. I know that. <laughs> I know that. I don't know what I was in their eyes. A peer at best. That's <laughs> not sure. My room, it would lead right into the living room. I walked out of my room one morning. Their oldest pops his head up, and he goes, watch out, Mr. Nate. Mom and dad are in a fight. I'm like, Mom and dad, who do you think I am to you? Like, let's, do you think you adopted a 26-year-old white guy? Like, need to figure this out. Like, let's, also, thank you. I'll be very quiet when I use the bathroom this morning. <laughs> Appreciate that. There were some differences. There were some cultural differences we ran into. Um, I was babysitting the kids one night, and the two girls ran up to me. And they were like, Mr. Nate, read us a book. And I was like, I accept your challenge. Children, go get your favorite book. And uh, they run off, and they grab their favorite book. And we sit down on the couch and we grab the book. I'm getting ready to read it. And I look at the title of the book. The title of the book is happy to be nappy. (laughs) 
which is a children's book about just how fun and empowering your hair can be as a tiny African-American girl. And she's not something I've thought about, you know? <laughs> Done no research coming into this topic cold. <laughs> I didn't know. I panicked. I was like, do you guys have Cat in the Hat? I had Cat in the Hat. Why don't we go find Cat in the Hat? Do you have Hop on Pop? Anything? Yertle the Turtle? Anything? Like, <laughs> I'm desperate. Let's do They're like, no, it's our favorite book. Please read it to us. It's our favorite. And I was like, all right, I'll read it. Everybody put your cell phone in this basket before I start. <laughs> Taking every precaution. <laughs> I read the book. I read the book. I read it very awkwardly, very slowly. And uh, I don't know. Afterwards, they felt empowered. I was taken down a peg. So good day for America. <laughs> they had criticism. <laughs> One of them was like, you don't read as good as my dad does. It's like, yeah, I can't. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know if you picked up on that. Uh, I did have to move out eventually. The, the two daughters started playing pranks on me. And uh, that's when I was like, time to go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they figured out they're smarter than me. That's not good. <laughs> Their favorite prank was uh, they would jiggle the bathroom handle whenever I was in there. <laughs> and they were hitting a 1,000 with that prank. <laughs> Knocking out, because the bathroom door did not lock. So, <laughs> it'll scare you every time. <laughs> every... <laughs> and I just get weirdly polite when I get scared. So, it <laughs> to be in there using the facilities. <laughs> and they jiggle the handle. I'll be like, oh, no, please, no, please. <laughs> 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 Not at this moment, thank you. <laughs> like, oh. oh. And then they would just laugh. Like, they would, like three minutes, three minutes straight, they would just laugh. And I don't comedy subjective. So like good, good for them. They found what they like. That's that's important. One really cool moment was I had gone uh, back to my parents for the weekend, came back to the house with a sunburn, and the kids were amazed. <laughs> They're like, this is the coolest thing we've ever seen. Like, our roommate changes colors. That is. And like, I came back with a farmer's tan, and it's like, that was really cool to like bring my culture and share that with them. <laughs> I feel like we healed America a little bit, you know? Like, that's how you heal, you share. Like, that's, one, that's what it is. No. I didn't do a bachelor party, I didn't have one of those, which is probably fine, that's okay, that's gonna be fine. I had one friend that was like, you should get a stripper for your bachelor party. And I was like, let's not do that to some poor stranger. Like, let's. <laughs> it wouldn't be good. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how you think I'm supposed to act in front of it. Like, I'm awkward if you're clothed. Like, I don't know what. <laughs> What you expect me to do? I'll get nervous and try to like compliment her because I know she's working hard and that wouldn't go well either. Like she'd be getting a lap dance, being like, ooh, you're quite the bendy gal. <laughs> Strong core, that's a good. Did you do P90 before P90X? That was smart. Just ramp up to it. Bet tax season's tough. <laughs> Handle a lot of cash, so you like a like a like a turbo tax lady or quicken kind of gal. It's good. I love Big and Rich too. What a song choice. That was, that was phenomenal. No, I'm not a stripper guy. I'm a fun guy. I like fun stuff. I went on a cruise. That was a good time. The cruise was fun. This is the first time I left the country on a cruise. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I can't navigate open water, so I don't... I have no, they could have done a U-turn and dropped me off in Destin. <laughs> i gotten off the boat like the Caribbean's beautiful. This is... Oh, that air. <laughs> Love this culture. We don't get this culture in America. This is... You got to get out. You got to get out. You got to travel more, guys. <laughs> 
Oh, I met a guy on the boat, and uh, I was asking him what he did for a living, and he said he was on a Christian dunk team. I was like, I have a few follow-up questions. <laughs> I don't know. I've read the Bible. I don't remember basketball being a big theme. <laughs> I don't know any of the Gospels where the disciple was like, Lord, what is life? And he was like, my child, ball. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if, if basketball is a big thing. And this guy, like, I was, he had, like, long hair and a beard. And I was like, do you play Jesus in the dunk? T- that's probably, what does that look like? like? Does Jesus, like, sprain his ankle in the first quarter? And, like, they cart him off. Three quarters later, he dunks on Satan. I don't know. Like, it'd be kind of fun. Kind of good. I don't know. I just don't, I just don't think that Jesus is a huge basketball fan. I really don't. Regionally, he's into soccer. That's one thing. <laughs> so, sandals are not good ankle support. I don't think. I don't think he's locking anybody down defensively. I don't think that's that's happening. I don't know if Jesus could dunk. I don't know if he was a good dunker. I don't think the texts reveal that or not. <laughs> um, but I I believe that he could have been because he wasn't white. So that helps. Then, <laughs> yeah. Bit of a leg up. (laughs) Being married's been good. My wife's, she's very sweet. She's like, I want us to make financial decisions together. And I was like, I don't know. You went to all of college, so (laughs) I'm going to leave that up to you. (laughs) Uh, She's the breadwinner. I don't know if anybody would have missed that question on a pop quiz, but (laughs) it was pretty obvious. I don't know. She, like, reads financial books. Like, she's taught a financial class. And, like, my identity got stolen because I bought a Captain America shield from China. So. <laughs> like, trust your instincts. Don't ask. Don't ask me. It was great. I, I have health insurance for the first time in a while. First time. Yeah. I, this is the first time I've had health insurance since I got kicked off my parents' plant. That was it was great. I got kicked off, and I was like, I'm going to find a loophole. And I found a loophole, marrying out of my tax bracket. That was the loophole. I was like, take that, Obama. That's how long ago it was. So <laughs> it was great. I love health insurance. It's a good time. It was awesome. They sent me a card. That was fun. Got some mail. Got some mail. I got a card in the mail. I ripped it open. It was like Charlie with the golden ticket. It was, it was my wife was like, run, run to a doctor's office as fast as you can. <laughs> He was like held it up and sprinted like it was it was great. I did. I burst into a doctor's office. I pointed at a directory like it was a menu. Like, I was like, give me the work, show me everyone. Like, let's like, do you need to see a gynecologist? I was like, I don't know, is it covered? Let's <laughs> let's do it. Let's pay some codes. I've heard a lot about that. Let's, it's gonna be fun. I went to the dentist uh, for the first time in a decade. That was a long Long time to not go to the dentist, and I'll be honest, not impressed. Not <laughs> impressed. I'm so mad. I go to the dentist office, it's been a decade. Think about your cell phone from 10 years ago. A lot of advancement. A lot of advancement, a lot of innovation. I walk into a dentist office, they're still pushing floss. Like, <laughs> like are you kidding me? Like, I'm sitting in a chair out of Star Trek. Like, you took a picture of the inside of my teeth, and you're still like gum disease string? <laughs> so mad I was furious so mad the lady's like poking me with the the metal thing she's like oh your gums are bleeding I'm like yeah it's flesh I don't know know if they covered that in dentist school fun fact about the human body if you poke my leg with a sharp object hard enough it'll bleed too so mad so furious the dentist comes in at the very end to like headline the whole thing like he just he shows up at the last minute to take all the credit. <laughs> like, this poor lady had to deal with my stupid mouth for the past hour. Then he rolls in. He's like, let me tell you what I Googled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't have answers. He didn't know. He, wasn't, he was like, oh, one thing you might want to consider is braces. I'm like, oh, one thing you might want to consider, I'm in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to download LimeWire next? I'm not getting braces. Ridiculous. 
he like got my x-rays. He's like, as you can see, you're not like a very efficient chewer. And I was like, I think we both know that's not true. Like, <laughs> thought it was mean of him to make me say it. Like that was, <laughs> it's frustrating. I went to the eye doctor for the first time in my life. I think we can all see how we ended up there. <laughs> like, <laughs> to, the, the doctor's examining me. He's like, did you drive here? What is going on? This isn't, <laughs> it's not good. I'm 31 years old. I'm six months into glasses. I've needed them every single day of my entire life. <laughs> no idea. I had, he had questions. He was like, could you not tell that you couldn't see far away? And I was like, no, I'm not Inspector Gadget. Like, that's, that's the point of distance. Like, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know. I put on glasses for the first time, and I was like, oh, no. I have made a lot of weird eye contact with people. <laughs> I had no idea y'all could see this far. <laughs> this is, ah, so many parks just, <laughs> just staring. <laughs> it's like, it was the male gaze, or is he nearsighted? <laughs> I don't know. I got a cold a few weeks ago, just a regular cold. Completely forgot about those. I... <laughs> forgot about regular I woke up with the sniffles I was like there it is I'm dead <laughs> and like a scratchy throat cough twice and I told my wife I was like drop the will that's it that's it for me like started pointing at things telling her who to give away to and she was like um nothing in this house is yours I don't know why <laughs> you brought nothing into this marriage what are you trying to I was like, what about my PlayStation? She's like, I'm going to sell it when you die. So, <laughs> no, it was great. She was very sweet. She ran to the drugstore. She came back with a big bag full of medicine for me. And so I'm, I'm sitting up and I'm starting to dig through it. And I start to get a little angry. And then I get progressively more angry because every bit of medicine she bought me was off-brand medication. And I was furious. <laughs> I was like, you know, this is for me, right? Like, what do we... We need to clap it up if you do off-brand medication. All right, all right. Most people in here. Round of applause if you do off-brand soda. Oh! Interesting. Is it because you can tell one's better? Like... One's clearly better than the other. Like, I was about, this wasn't a Coke Pepsi situation. This was like Coke or an open Darcy Cola from 1994. Like, that was the option. I was so mad. I was, I was like, I just asked for NyQuil. She's like, I got you, NyQuil. I'm like, you got me green syrup, cough no more. Like, they spelled cough wrong on the label. Like, see why I'm frustrated. <laughs> She was like, well, this one was $2 cheaper. And I was like, is that your eulogy for me? You already have that written. <laughs> like, oh, my husband's dead, but I can get one and a half things off the dollar menu on the way home. <laughs> it's furious. I was furious. She goes, well, they have the same active ingredients. I was like, you don't even know what that means. <laughs> like, same. I have the same active ingredients as other humans. Like... George Clooney and I have the same active ingredients. <laughs> Telling me that's not a name brand human? Like, that's... Oh, man. I didn't, I didn't know women like true crime as much until I got married. Women, y'all love murder. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't... I don't, I don't know. I was trying to figure out why my wife loved true crime so much, and she was trying to explain it to me, and she's like, well, I connect with it because it happens to women, and like, I like to know that justice happens, and sometimes I listen to learn you know, what not to do to put myself in that situation. And I was like, man, that's exactly why I watch Man vs. Wild. Like, <laughs> samesies, you know? Like, <laughs> the same thing. It's not. It's not the same thing at all. Like, there's a very good chance that my wife is going to be in a terrible situation. Uh, I'm never going to survive in the Amazon. Like, I don't, I'm not going to survive a plane crash. <laughs> also, I'm not the guy that's going to go into the jungle. Like, I know who I am. <laughs> like, I'm the guy you eat first. That's who I am. Plane goes down. No, you don't put me in, like, sniffing into the jungle with a backpack. I don't, 
I don't like the spiders at my house. I'm not dealing with the ones. <laughs> I've watched so many episodes of Man vs. Wild. I have so much of that information in my head. I don't need any of it. I don't need a bit of it. I needed Man vs. Tax Returns. That's what a... <laughs> Help me a little bit, you know? Put Bear girls in front of TurboTax for 45 minutes. That would be... Be awesome. Listening to one episode of True Crime uh, in the car, and I start to say something, and my wife shushes me, and she turns it up. I was like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? <laughs> she goes, oh, this happened two streets down from our house. I was like, no. <laughs> we don't want crime to be more relatable. That's not <laughs> exciting. <laughs> it was terrifying. <laughs> I was like, no more fun facts. No more. <laughs> no more of those. I've listened to a lot of true crime. I've listened to a lot of true crime. And uh, I'm frustrated because I haven't heard any true crime podcast about my favorite murderer. Maybe y'all have heard of him. Cain from the Bible. <laughs> I like the classics, y'all. I like, <laughs> like rocks to heads. It's a good time. It's a lot of... <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if y'all have run the numbers lately. Uh, Cain killed his brother Abel, killing 25% of the <laughs> Earth's population. <laughs> No one's doing numbers like that, y'all. That is. <laughs> Respect the goats. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm trying to say. A lot of people are like, Jack the Ripper. You know, I'm like, mm. <laughs> like, look at the shooting percentage, you know? Like, don't look at totals. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> Everybody on earth knew somebody he had murdered. That's crazy. That's. <laughs> She was listening to one podcast, and she was explaining the premise of the podcast to me, and it is the daughter of a serial killer that is going around and interviewing the families of her father's victims. I was like, I don't like to talk to people I went to high school with. <laughs> Seems pretty awkward. I don't, know, I don't know what you titled the episodes. I don't, at the one point, it's like, episode 13, really, Dad? Okay, ugh. <laughs> I do a podcast. It can be awkward to start. I cannot imagine how you open these podcasts. Like, just sitting across from the person. Hey. <laughs> right? How are you? <laughs> I don't know. She was trying to explain. She's like, no, it's, it's actually really cool. She's, sometimes they bond over this shared trauma. She said, a lot of times, by the end of the episode, they become friends. I was like, friends? <laughs> it's not a friend you ever want to introduce to another friend. <laughs> like, can't be at a Christmas party. And I was like, how do you know Lauren? Oh, my gosh, crazy story. Uh -huh. <laughs> Remember how my brother was murdered? Her dad. <laughs> I know, small world. <laughs> She actually tells it so much better than I do. Come on. <laughs> My parents stayed busy during the pandemic. That was good. My mom did 23 and Me twice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why the second time. I don't know. She just like got the results and was like, run the numbers again. <laughs> Let's crunch them. <laughs> like, You're wider this time. Like, I don't know. My dad was inspired, and he was like, I want Ancestry.com for Christmas. And I was like, no. <laughs> He's like, no, I really want, like, I want Ancestry.com. I love to do that. And I was like, all right. So we got him Ancestry.com for Christmas. We're sitting down helping him log in. And he's, like, trying to make a joke. And he, like, nudges me. He's like, I hope we don't find anything we don't want to find out. <laughs> That's exclusively what we're going to find out. <laughs> You think they've hid good stories in our history? Like, we're white people from Virginia. Like, we've heard all the good stuff, trust me. Like, I don't, we need to dig too deep. We did. We dug into it. It <laughs> wasn't good. We sat with the family tree. It took two generations before we found possible incest. That was fun. <laughs> Just clicking, filling it out, and you're like, there's a lot of Owens right here. There's a lot... So like, yeah, that Owens is very close to the that Owens. That's shouldn't they be? Shouldn't, shouldn't they be further apart? 
Can we spread them? Can we spread out the Owens? Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's maybe there's a lot of Owens from Grundy County, Virginia. You know, maybe there's a lot of different ones up there. We clicked too far. We clicked. We clicked way too far. We found a guy who uh, his name was James Madison Owens, and I was like, all right, probably cool dude. Let's see what this guy's about. I clicked on his profile. Turns out his nickname was Humpy Jim. Humpy Jim Owens. A nickname that followed him 200 years after his death. <laughs> We're trying to recover. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe he was like deformed, you know? Like, maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe he looked like Quasimodo. And everybody was like, there goes Humpy Jim. And he was like, I'm going to laugh with you guys. You know, maybe it was... Probably not. Probably, probably just the grossest dude of all time. Probably the creepiest dude. You know how creepy of a dude you have to be to be a creepy dude in 1770? Like, <laughs> creepiest dude ever. I don't know. My wife was like, maybe we'll find, like, some names for future children. I was like, I don't know. We found a name for a boy dog if we ever get one of those. It's like, we got friends coming over. Put Humpy Jim in the crate. Like... It's actually a family name. I don't know. <laughs> family goes to a white beach every year. We go to a southern white beach, and it's great. I love southern beaches so much. They're a good time. A southern beach is just white Wakanda. That's what it is. <laughs> it's a good time. It really, it really is. It's fun. The problem is when you isolate white people, we don't make like huge technological advances. We just sell hermit crabs out of every single shop. That's what we... <laughs> We came up with, they're just like, is that nice hardware? Let's sell slinkies and hermit crabs. Let's do it. <laughs> it's a good time. I love beach shops. That's a good time. I like walking into those. Uh, I don't know if y'all have been to one lately, but uh, they put sharks on boogie boards. That's a weird. <laughs> I don't know whose idea that was. <laughs> like, they're just like, what should we put on this child's ocean toy? I don't know, worst case scenario. Would that be fun? <laughs> should we remind the child of the invisible danger that's always around them? Should we... Should we do that? Last time I went, they were selling a Confederate flag beach towel. Don't know who that's for. <laughs> I don't know who walks into a beach shop and was like, hey, I want to let people know, like, I'm racist, but, like, chill. <laughs> <laughs> like, three things about me. I like my toes in the sand. I like cold beers, and I want schools resegregated. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know who that guy is. I don't know. I don't know. I saw a girl trying to get a tan on a Confederate flag beach towel. And I was like, I don't think she's done her research. <laughs> that is not what they were about. <laughs> that is, that's it. Guys, thank you all so much. My name's Nathan Owens. <laughs>